All right, hello everybody. This is going to be a tutorial on how to use your Synology NAS as a storage for your Final Cut projects so you can work on them over the network. This is really helpful because as you know, Final Cut files can get huge, over 500 gigabytes easily if you're using the Final Cut optimized media. <laughs> So first off, if you're doing this, you're probably going to want at least a wired gigabit connection. Otherwise, it's going to be almost completely unusable. This is only going to give you about 125 megabytes per second. So realistically, a 10 gigabit card would be preferable. And I've got a tutorial for that. Also for this tutorial, I'm only going to be covering NFS. There are two different ways you can connect to your Synology, NFS and SMB for Final Cut Pro projects. However, SMB has a few issues, so in this case, NFS is going to be what you want to use. It's also a great file standard for small file transfers, as it does not have the same overhead as SMB does for each transfer. So now I'm going to show you what it's actually like when you try to use SMB without configuring it. So we're going to go into one of my archives. Alright, so right here I've just got a Final Cut bundle that is currently saved on a SMB share on my Synology. So this is what happens when I double click on it to open it. it. You get this error. Unsupported volume type, check a local SAN, storage area network, or supported SMB location. So unfortunately, I have not gone through and done the configuration so it's not going to work. So instead of using SMB, we're going to use what's called NFS, which is Network File System. NFS is a Unix only protocol, so you're not going to be able to use it on Windows. However, you can't use Final Cut on Windows either, so we're at a moot point. So the first thing we're actually going to do here is configure our Mac to use a static IP address. This is not required, but it can help your traffic go faster. So we're going to go through and click System Preferences, Network, and we're going to edit this connection. This is my 10 gigabit connection. So under configure IP4, we're going to change this from using DHCP, basically means your router assigns you a random IP address every time. We're going to use DHCP with a manual address. And see, now we can select an IP address that we would like to use. So as you can see here, my router's IP address is 192.168.1 dot one because my subnet mask is what it is 255.255.255.0 i can only vary the last segment of the ip address so i'm going to want to keep the 192.168.1 the same this way everything else on my network will be able to find it you want to make sure to copy the first three segments of your router's IP address, and then the fourth is what you can decide. So I'm going to change it to 120 and hit apply. One thing to note, if your router accidentally gives out this 192.168.1.120, your Mac will not be able to connect or will revert to a automatic IP address. So you're going to want to make sure to set up your router to automatically only give out addresses that are below a certain value. For me, I use below 100 for DHCP and then I self assign everything above 100. This way I ha can have up to 100 devices on my network that I don't control, which I'm not going to have. And I can have a bunch of IP addresses to work with myself so I never accidentally assign myself to IP addresses. All right, so now that's done. So we're gonna go now and we're gonna log in to DSM. All right, so once we've logged in, we're gonna to have to enable NFS. So we're gonna go into control panel, file services, and go down to the final value, which is enable NFS. And you're gonna to wanna to use NFS v4.2 because it's just faster and hit apply. This is basically just enabled using NFS generally on our NAS. But NFS differs slightly because it also has to be enabled per folder. And they get aliases and self-assigned IP addresses. So we're going to go through here and we're going to use the one. We're going to use for tutorial. And we're going to hit edit. 
So here, there is an entire subsection of the menu for NFS permissions. So we're going to select that and we're going to create a new rule. So this is the host name or the IP address that you would like to be able to connect to this. What we're going to do is we're going to type in that IP address that we just set moments ago on our Mac to make sure our Mac can connect to this. As you can see here, it also supports wildcards. However, for security, you're not going to want to open up every single possible IP address to this, as well as you can get packets crossed. So we're going to select the IP address we just chose and give it a subnet. If you don't know anything about subnets, leave this to 255.255.255.0. That'll work 95% of the time and you don't have any stress. And we're going to allow mounting and any ports we would like to choose. And now just hit OK to create the settings. All right, so now we should be able to connect to this on our Mac. All right, so now that we've enabled NFS support on our folder, we're actually gonna go through and connect to it in Finder. So we're gonna type Command K, and that's gonna bring up this connect to server browser. So the way we're gonna to connect to it is to type in NFS colon slash slash the IP address of your NAS, followed by backslash volume one, my photography folder is stored on volume one, and backslash photography. It's the same thing that was in that box earlier, and hit connect. So now you can see we've connected to it. And I'm gonna go back to that same folder. All right, boom. We're now able to connect to it over a network share and it works just fine. So this is great because it's really saving a ton of space on our local hard drive because you know how big Final Cut projects can go. Though I have heard issues with people using NFS and having stability issues. So keep that in mind. I'm going to be making a video soon where you can also use the SMB protocol, which is supposed to be a little bit more stable, a little bit slower, but more stable, but it comes with an issue with time machine that I'll explain in that video. All right. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to see the next video and have a good day. Bye.